Ratana Pa near Hanganui, Maori people from many parts of New Zealand, together with the Prime Minister and members of Cabinet, gather to attend the funeral of Tokoru Ratana, son of the founder of the Ratana movement. Tokoru Ratana has been its leader since 1939, when his father died. From this centre, the movement spread among the Maori people from North Auckland to the Chatham Islands. It has its own clergy called Apostles and Sisters, and much of its early success was because of faith healing on the part of Wiremu Ratana, a power ascribed to him by his followers rather than claimed by Ratana himself. His son in carrying on his father's work was a quiet and gentle man, a real Maori and a leader amongst the Maori people. At his graveside we say, Depart, O sire, to thy father in spirit land. Follow the footsteps of your young men now lying in the courtyard of the war god to Mathoinga. Farewell, and go thou to thy ancestors who dwell in spirit land. Haere pāki tō matua i te pō. Whaia tu i ngā tapu wai o tamariki e tīraha maira tamarai o tū matau. Haere, haere ki te iwi i te pō. In this Hastings Furniture Factory, they're making wheel-back chairs. The steaming stage in the shaping of wood for chair backs comes after the soaking process. The Turkish bath treatment takes a lot of the stiffness out of the boards and makes them almost as pliable as willow twigs. Firmly held in this shaper by a steel band, they can be, with the application of a little brute force, bent into graceful curves. Chairs need legs and backs need spokes. And this automatic lathe not only turns out legs and spokes in a twinkling, but makes them more alike than peas from the same pod. So there's no extra work in matching. When they're dried out, the bent boards stay bent, and now are recognizable as the rims of chair backs. Speedy modern methods of sandpapering smooth out the rough edges of both the wood and the production schedule. To drive the spokes home, the backs put into a frame, and the frames squeezed together by compressed air. And there's not only furniture. A self-feeding automatic lathe turns out spindles for the Foxton flax mills. These modern English machines bring to woodworking the speed and accuracy needed for mass production. In this factory, every length of wood is used. Finding uses for the leftovers is something they specialize in. Their motto is, no wood wasted. Pencil cases use up a lot of the straps. They're the same shape as they used to be, and the router rapidly gouges out the well-remembered grooves. Besides thinking up more ways of using scraps, the research engineer tests paints. A hard-wearing paint is needed, and a new formula can always be tried out on toys. If the paint stays on toys, it's a good paint. In this factory, they certainly make the most of their wood. When they've finished with a length of timber, there's nothing left but the shavings and the sawdust. These toys are made from scrap, but nothing rattles these girls.
when the New Zealand public heard that HMNZS Gambia was in port, they certainly took advantage of the opportunity to inspect her, and hundreds tramped up the gangway marked in, but nobody wanted to use the gangway marked out. And it wasn't long before HMNZS Gambia looked like a chain store on Christmas Eve. Small boys had the time of their lives. This was better than taking the back off Dad's watch. The Air Force and Army cast an approving eye over armament, whilst the Navy was kept busy explaining how things worked. Originally commissioned in 1941 in the Royal Navy, Gambia is now a unit of the Royal New Zealand Navy and takes her base alongside the Leander and the Achilles. Some of the visitors were intrigued by the verdant beards which seemed to flourish on the ship. For some, it was an opportunity to see friends and relatives who'd been long overseas. The ship's pet thought it all very slow, but then he hadn't told that to the Royal Marines. They could correct the impression. After all, this is better than being at sea. You're telling me. 